Morning America, how are we doing today? Um, as promised, a, uh, a review or, or a, uh, a little bit more detailed, uh, not really a, how am I going to say this? Not really a pure detailed overview of the truck. Some of the things I'm going to have to do to get it up and running, okay, up and ready to roll, okay. There's, there's, it's minor stuff, it's, but it's a whole bunch of little things, you know. I don't think there's anything major except one. May I get to that? Um, well, let me see. What do I know about this truck? It's a 2004 uh, Peterbilt 379. It's, um, it's got a, a Caterpillar MBN motor. Now, the MBN motor came out right after the 6NZ motor, okay. Um, it's still a non-emissioned motor, okay. Uh, what Catap in, in 03, what they had to do uh, is, well, in 04, in 04, what they had to do in October of 03, let's put it that way, they called they're called October engines. October of 03, the EPA said that they had to have a certain level of uh, emissions on it. Cummins and Detroit and all the others, they they did it with an EGR valve. Caterpillar decided not to use an EGR valve. They decided to do it with tuning. Okay, so what they did is they took their best motor that they had, this 6NZ, and they retuned it with the electronics. Okay, give it a different electronics package, so to say, in the ECM. And what that did, it it kind of snipped it, kind of like that steer over there. It <laughs> kind of snipped it, and it's it wasn't as good of a motor. It, mechanically it was physically just as good as motor okay it just it didn't get as good fuel mileage and it didn't pull as well why because they neutered it trying to get the emissions down it didn't work okay so they only did it for like one year in 04 that's about the only year you're going to find an mbn motor i think i'm not 100 percent on this but I'm, I, this is what i've learned about them so what they did is uh, uh, in 04, in 05, they decided now that that didn't work. Let's let's we've been working on this twin turbo technology, this ACERT technology. Let's hurry that up. And they hurried it up in 05, and it was kind of a disaster for Cat. Uh, it just they weren't ready to put it out yet, but they had to because the government was fining them because of this motor. Okay, they put these motors out, and every one of these motors they put on the road, they weren't close enough on the emissions, and the government was in there finding them and giving them you know giving them hell so they hurried up the acert motor in 05 put it out it wasn't ready it, they had all kinds of problems they had a lot of lot of uh, a lot of trucking companies and a lot of truck drivers that bought them uh joined a class action suit and all that and so it's, it's that's all history whatever but they hurried up in 05 6, 7 and got this acert twin turbo in there in 08 they decided to put um uh, that um the burner on there and it, what it looks like is right behind the turbo it looks like this huge distributor cap it's an exhaust but it kind of looks like a distributor cap and um, um, that's what we call it anyway it's not, nothing to do with the distributor cap it just kind of looks that way it, gives, it has that look to it so that's why we call it that and it was supposed to be a, um, a fuel um, burning soot collector uh, there's a soot collector down underneath and then they this was to burn uh, uh, squirt fuel in there and catch it on fire and burn it out the way a, uh, a dpf filter works so caterpillar didn't do too good on that one either uh, and caterpillar says you know we've got all these bulldozers and scrapers and all this heavy equipment stuff we can make money on to hell with them you know so they they dropped over the road motors that's why you don't see caterpillar motors anymore so <clears throat> this is that motor it's an mbn motor it's 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 a, a 6NZ that's been modified internally as far as electronics, and I think the turbo or something is a little different, but they twisted it just a little bit to try to get the emissions right, and it didn't work. So the good thing about that, it's not a 6NZ, so it doesn't cost a lot, but I can go in and take the, the, the ECM and change it and basically turn it back into a 6NZ. So I'm gonna do that because it's under warranty. It's, it, was, it was overhauled about four years ago, two and a half years ago. So I still got a year and a half warranty on this motor. It's got a four year unlimited mile warranty. So uh, that was a big, big plus. Um, the second thing about it, it has a 13 speed transmission. That's the bad thing, okay? When I bought it, when I test drove it, I didn't notice it. But on the way home, when I drove from St. Louis back down here to Dallas last week, I noticed there was a little kind of slop in the transmission. 
I'll address that on a separate video because uh, it's kind of a I, I do I need to do a little bit of more research on it but I think it's just the transmission it's not broke or anything I think it's just long in the tooth and it won't be long before I'll have to overhaul the transmission so hopefully that won't cost a lot I mean I mean it'll cost a lot but it won't be break the bank kind of thing so <clears throat> anyway with that uh there are a bunch of little minor things about this truck that I need to address. The, the, the transmission's the big thing, okay? All these other little things are just nitpicky things, but the things that I want to get done before I put it out on the road. Now, uh, obviously you can see it's white with yellow stripes. <laughs> the white is fine. I, li I like the white. It looks good. You know, it actually in the sun, it's overcast today and a little breezy. And it's not showing, but it, it the, the white it has a good, good, uh, um, good, what do you call it, a uh, uh, clear coat on it, okay? It has a shine to it, okay? The yellow is fine too, but it's yellow and I don't like yellow. So what I'm thinking about doing, Kenworth has a, um, Kenworth has a, uh, a, a paint called Sovereign Blue and it's the same color as that Raptor over there. It's the same color as uh, my previous trucks, uh, my, my old blue Kenworths and uh, the, the Kirk, the Kirk's truck, that's T660, that's Sovereign Blue is what they call that. And I just love that color. So I might take it to a body shop and have them repaint the yellow, just paint it blue. So it's white with blue stripes instead of yellow. I've also thought about using a body wrap. You know, these uh, vinyl stickers, these body wraps they put on cars and, you know, commercial vans and things for like a restaurant wants to advertise their restaurants. They wrap a Volkswagen Beetle or something, you know. Um, I, it's easy to do on a flat surface. I mean, super easy, super cheap, whatever. Just slap, slap some vinyl stickers on there and be done with it. Okay, that's another option. Okay, if I do that, maybe on the side of the sleeper, I might put my uh, Saznac logo. You know, the Saznac, uh, uh, this little bumper stickers, the old stickers I, I give away. I might make one of those and just blow it up to about six foot, stick it on the side of the sleeper. I don't know. I'm thinking about stuff like that. I don't know. Um, okay, let's get a little closer. Let me show you a few of these other things that I want to show you. I was telling you about the, uh, I was telling you about the, uh, the paint and the, the paint's in pretty good shape all overall. Okay. Uh, it's not bad. Okay. But right up here around the window, it's got a little peeling. Okay. A little bit of rust and all that. That can be touched up. I think I, I could probably do that. Get a Dremel tool with a little wire brush and just kind of clean it up and tape it all off and just use a rattle can. I, I don't know, that's, that's the hillbilly way, I suppose. <laughs> the old redneck, redneck engineering there. But it would just touch that up enough until later on I decide to paint the thing. That's possibly what I'll do, I don't know. The uh, front of the stainless steel, uh, everything on the front, okay? On the front here, the visor, the front of the mirrors, all that stuff all has kind of a dull haze to it because of all the sandblasting. Every little pebble that comes in, a little sand and every little thing over, over a million miles, it, it could be used polished up, okay? Um, that's something I can take it out to, uh, when, next time I go to Arizona with it, uh, sometime next summer or something, I go out there to Eloy and they got the, the aluminum polishers. Well, they can polish stainless steel too. They charge you a little more for it because it's harder to do. But they can buff all this stuff out and make it look pretty again. All right, uh, the visor has louvers in it. I don't like the louvers at all. Uh, I might just take that visor off and put just my, the visor that I like on there. Very, almost the same visor, but just smooth instead of all the louvers. I don't like that. Uh, around to the front. And of course, <laughs> what do we notice here? <laughs> uh, we've got the old, uh, this is an old style. Uh, it's new, it's a, re a reproduction of one. Uh, back in the day when they had the butterfly hood, uh, this is a clamshell hood, okay? You undo the hood, hit, hit, uh, latches, and you, you pick up on this and you pull the hood open. That's called a clamshell hood, okay? Now, uh, the ones before that were called butterfly hood. They had a, a, a brace right down the center with hinges on it, and the sides would fold up almost like, like gull wings on a DeLorean or something. They would fold up and you would access the engine from the sides. And the radiator actually was out on the front here. This wasn't just a covered up, it was an actual radiator out here. And when they had that, one of the ways they could tell the temperature is they put the temperature gauge right on the front. So when you're driving down the road, you could read this temperature gauge about, you know, five feet in front of you and you can see if your engine was getting hot. <laughs> the thermometer was right in here. 
this is not an acti uh, active one, of course. It's a reproduction one. It's just for looks. But that's what that is. Uh, I will probably take that off because it's showing its wear and everything. Chips and, you know, the chrome's peeling off. I'm going to be putting the cross back up there, I'm sure. So, uh, what else? Okay, down here on the headlights. These are 359 headlight pods. Okay, the, the old round four, four bulb headlights. Uh, they're on JJ brackets and the fenders have JJ braces and JJ turn signals. <laughs> so that's a brand, a J JJ brand. Uh, they make these pieces and they're the only ones that make them. They're really good at it. They're extremely expensive. My burgundy truck had the same thing on here and here. Uh, no, it didn't just have this. Uh, the headlight was a, 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 a factory pod, but this is an aftermarket pod and oh, they look cool. I like them. You just polish them up. They're aluminum. You just polish them up and clean them up, make them look nice. So that's another little project I'll work on. Now, I was talking about the paint job earlier. When I go to paint it or, or vinyl wrap it or whatever I decide to do, this vinyl wrap or paint goes in behind here and wraps around the back of the cab. So to get to it, you got to take this all off. So when I go to take, when I go to do all this, I'm going to have to take that stack off, that muffler at least, and get it out of the way for the painter or whatever. At that point, instead of putting this back up, I'm sure I'll put straight pipes on there. I'll put my eight inch straight pipes on there. Now, uh, straight pipes, they really sound cool. I like them. It's one of the reasons I can't hear very well anymore. <laughs> 34 years of oh, that droning noise, that low frequency, has hurt my ear, hearing. I, I don't hear as well as I used to. Um, I'm, I hear really good when it's quiet. I can hear a mouse fart on the other side of the room. But when there's a lot of noise, you're in a nightclub, boom, 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 boom. You know, uh, you're in a busy or a noisy restaurant. I have a hard time hearing the person talking to me. Okay, uh, I love the sound of straight pipes i love the sound of those loud jakes Blurr. and these this is I, these mufflers are burnt out <laughs> okay these mufflers are burnt out because when you hit the jake this thing sounds great it it uh, has that not that eight inch low rumble it has more of a the five inch raspy Blurr. okay it sounds cool but um that will come off and i'll put eight inch pipes on there when i get when i put that on in underneath the cab on the, the, the back pipe i'll put a resonator in there and that will cut the sound down quite a bit that's what was on the red truck the burgundy truck it had a resonator underneath it so <clears throat> with that it had uh you have to have some kind of a muffler system in colorado a lot of other states have rules and laws about it but colorado they really enforce it when you pull in there with straight pipes they pull you over they go out and they look underneath and they make damn sure you got a muffler underneath there so um, I've got uh, that red truck I got pulled in several times at Colorado uh, uh, Port of Entries. I uh, wanted to make sure I had uh, exhaust on here. So, um, and I don't really, I, I kind of like the quiet nowadays. I'm, I'm, I, in my younger days, I did like that raspy. But anyway, whenever I go to do the paint job, I'll probably do the pipes all at the same time. Okay, onward. All right, back here at the back, we have the fifth wheel. <laughs> yeah, we got tires and all that. And the tires are very low on rubber. They're about five or six thirty seconds. They're not very much rubber on there. And I mentioned that to the salesman, and that's why he knocked a bunch of money off so I can go buy new tires on this thing. So um, I negotiated with him a little. I pointed out this and a couple things like this and this and this and uh, uh, said, hey, you know, <laughs> You want this price and it's going to cost me this, you know, this much money. I don't want to put that on top of that. I want you to take it off. And we worked a deal. I didn't get 100% of what I wanted, but, you know, nobody ever does. It's called negotiation. All right. So, but I did get a good little chunk of change off. Now I can, I can buy brand new tires and it won't cost me a dime. Now, uh, what I wanted to point out here, no, it wasn't so much the tires, was the fifth wheel. See where the fifth wheel sitting? Right in the center of the tandems. That's great if you're hauling heavy weight. You know, if you're hauling, uh, if you're hauling uh, 80,000 pounds and everything, you want that weight centered, pushing down in the middle of all this. And without getting into a long discussion how the fifth wheel slide affects weight distribution, you drivers know how it works. People that aren't drivers, I've got another video that uh, explains that. 
but not so much for weight distribution because I always haul empty trailers or very light, lightly loaded furniture trailers, okay? Uh, household goods and stuff like that during the summer. Um, there are times when I'll haul beverage traders or something along those lines. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work on this fifth wheel, okay? One, uh, one of the things is I need to move it back. Well, let me line you, yeah, you're good enough. <clears throat> this fifth wheel is right here. Now, as you can see from here to here, I can slide this all the way back to here, which puts the center about right there, okay? Uh, I can move that back 14 inches maybe, okay? Because it's kind of centered in the slide right now. Now, when I say slide and move, two different things. Slide is on the slider that I can push a button on the dash, the pins pop in and that slides back and forth to adjust weight. I'm gonna move the fifth wheel. And what that means is I'm gonna move this, slide the fifth wheel all the way to the back position back here. I'm gonna take all these bolts out and slide the whole car carriage back to about here. So that fifth wheel can be right above this back axle. Why? Because when you haul a beverage trader, most beverage traders have a very short neck overhang. Um, they're designed to go on a single screw or one axle tractor, okay? Uh, one drive axle, okay? I don't mean a, I don't mean like a unicycle. Um, you'd have a steer axle and you'll have one drive axle, not a tandem axles, okay? Um, why they do that is most beverage traders don't haul that much weight and they're, they're made for city delivery going down alleys behind grocery stores and stuff like that. So they want to keep a short wheelbase tractor and a fairly short trailer. And they only need one axle under there to support that much weight. So when they do that, they make the traders accordingly. Well, if you go to hook one of these big trucks onto one of those beverage traders, if I left it where it is right now, the trader would come out and come about right here and drop. And that's where the landing gear would be. Well, if their landing gear is right there, that landing gear is right there, I can't turn the truck, this, this uh, uh, mud flap bar and tail light bar would swing around and hit the trailer and tear it all up. So um, I'm gonna have to move the fifth wheel back but that's only if I want to haul beverage traders. It's not anything I have to do today, probably won't do anytime soon because uh, I don't haul that many of those beverage traders. In three and a half years, I think we hauled three or four of them in three and a half years with choice. Uh, one of the other things about a fifth wheel is a frameless end dump, okay? A frameless end dump, the trailer pivots, not the fifth wheel. The fifth wheel, what you want to do is lift this up, balance it, and, and wedge things underneath here to keep that fifth wheel stationary, okay? Because the pivot is actually on the trailer, okay? The reason that is because if it's a frameless trailer, as it goes up, the half frame, the connecting rods or frame or whatever, the half frame, whatever you wanna call that, that actually goes up with the trailer. As the trailer goes up, okay, that needs to pivot. Anyway, without getting... <laughs> So if I want to haul those kind of traders, I've got to modify this fifth wheel itself by putting some, some uh, um, stop rods in there, okay? That's something I will do down the road somewhere. Probably won't be anytime soon simply because I don't haul that many of those traders. Before we go inside, there's something I want to show you right here on the uh, door. Uh, the door claws right here, the, the clasp and everything. This one's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But... The pin over here, the striker pin, <laughs> the little collar around it is worn out. The, the, the steel is worn through. And the thing is, when you close this, here's your pin. And when the claws come over and they close and they're nice and tight when the door is closed, well, now that this is worn, there's a little gap right here. And now the door rattles just ever so slightly. So um, this pin is one of the things I'm going to have to replace. And that's going to be a booger. Those are hard to get out, I think. Um, Maybe I'll get lucky. Uh, I need to put some penetrating oil on this today, so when I work on it here a few days from now, uh, I can get that out. But anyway, striker pins are worn actually on both sides, but mainly on worse on the driver's side than the passenger side. All right, let's go inside.